I'm going to go ahead and, and just say some, speak some truths, if you don't mind. Because my understanding, based on reports I'm getting from campaigns and communities, is that um, we have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly and say that when you have a choice that is this clear, <clears throat> when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. Who's had to work harder and do more and overcome and achieves the second highest office in the land and is putting forward concrete proposals to directly address the things that are vital in our neighborhoods and our communities, from housing to making sure that our, our, our mothers and our, our fathers and our grandparents can afford medicine, and, and making sure that we are dealing with prices that are too high and rents that are too high. And, and are committed to is committed to making sure that we maintain the Affordable Care Act, so everybody's got help here. and cares about things like education and entrepreneurship in our neighborhoods. And that's on one side. And on the other side, you have someone who has consistently shown disregard, not just for the communities, but for you as a person. And you're thinking about sitting out? <laughs> but, you know, because of Putin might be. <laughs> and you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that. Because, because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly now, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm -hmm. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. Mm -hmm. And I think anybody you are talking to in a barbershop, anybody you are talking to in your house, in your family, at a, at, a, at church, who is coming with that kind of attitude? I think you have to ask them. Well, how can that be? Because the women in our lives have been getting our backs this entire time. They've been raising us and working and having our backs. And when we get in trouble. The system's not working for us. They're the ones who are out there marching and protesting. And so now you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a, a sign of strength because that's what being a man is, putting women down? That's not acceptable. 
That's not, it, this shouldn't even be a question. A few days ago, Obama delivered those remarks that you just watched. And before I give my opinion on them, I just want to state Nina Turner's commentary. Why are black men being lectured to? Why are black men being belittled in ways that no other voting group? And then the Hill messes it up. She added she has a lot of love for Obama, but for him to single out black men is wrong. And some of the black men that I have talked to have their reasons why they want to vote a different way. And even if some of us may not like that, we have to expect it. Unless President Barack Obama is going to go out and lecture every other group of men from other identity groups. My message for Democrats is don't bring it here to black men who by and large don't vote much differently from black women, she said. As a politician, we should be trying to get all voters to vote. And hopefully there are a few good men out there who do care about stripping away some of women's bodily autonomy. And an article mentions that one in four black men under the age of 50 express support for Trump. So... Obama's comments are just, where, where do we even begin? I, for, first of all, when he said the brothers, I just cringed. One of the things I despise most about politicians is how they have different ways of speaking depending on who their audience is. Um, so that was already just like a turn off. But if he were actually trying to address this bump of support for Trump with younger black men, what he would do is either pull Harris aside or one of her campaign officials and say, listen, she is losing young black male support in a way that I never had to worry about. You guys need to either host some town halls with young black men in these different swing states and figure out what what exactly are they having a problem with that the older black men and you know black women of all uh, age groups are not having an issue with. That's what he would do if he's actually trying to get to the bottom, the, the root of the problem. But one of the things that I never talk about that much is that back in it was either the end of 2016, start of 2017. The first rumblings of Harris running for president in 2020 began. And one of the ideas the donors had was that you could call people who didn't want to support her sexist and racist. Now, if you actually go and look at left wing criticism of Harris, not, not any of the conservative stuff, they're all over the place. Oh, you were the border seat, you know, all, all the rest of the garbage. But if you actually looked at, look at left wing criticism of her, there's a couple of main issues and, and, and points, one of which is just a general disenfranchisement with, with Biden, where people who over the last four years feel like they have not been affected in a very positive way by Biden's tenure are just not going to be excited to see his VP take over, especially a VP who can't even directly answer what she would do differently from him. Um, if you're looking at some more specific things. I'd say Gaza is one of the bigger issues. A lot of people are, are upset with her for the taking that middle of the road position on, on that matter, especially since she had a lot of people pleasantly surprised when she skipped Netanyahu's um, speech to a joint session of Congress a few months back. So the bottom line is that there are specific criticisms of her that young black men and other groups who may tend, you know, normally vote for Democrats um, could find themselves frustrated with with regard to her. But Obama doesn't want to address any of that. He doesn't want to like directly talk about those things. So he has to, in like this weird way, say, oh, you know, I, I think maybe it has something to do with you guys, you know, not not wanting to vote for a woman. And it's so stupid too, because it's like, you, you, you know, we all the people like to bring up that Harris didn't get any votes and, you know, that, it's not a big that that's not a big deal for the Democratic electorate. If it were, they would have been upset and rioting at the convention and polls would show they were dissatisfied. They were happy that she took the spot from Biden. But it's like he has the nerve to accuse black men of being sexist when 
Hillary won the black vote, what, in, in 2016? Of, of both genders, as far as I can remember. So suddenly, the same group of people who had no problem voting for a woman in a primary eight years ago now suddenly are, are just like, no, no woman can be... <sighs> Man, these people never... Um, they, they, they never learn. And you know, I was also going to throw this in out there. Now, say what you want about Obama, but he is a very good campaigner. Um, when he when he ran for office, his multiple different campaigns, both for president each time, and then you know for before that for senator and for the house, he's always able to make people feel good and communicate things in a way that sometimes you would um, you know find convincing. But where he has always struggled, one of his biggest flaws as a politician, and it's something that others have as well is that in spite of his own charisma and ability to appeal and inspire, he tends to be around a bunch of sinking ships. Uh, you can look at his 2010 midterm where the Democrats were wiped out. They lost over 60 seats. Um, the 2014 midterm where they lost the Senate. You know, he's he's not someone who's, as, who's really as capable at getting other people elected as himself, which is one of the reasons why when he left the White House, uh, his party had lost, I believe it was over a thousand seats in different state legislators, just, just blown out. And you're seeing that right now with his comments relating to Harris. I can't think of a single man who would listen to Obama give those remarks and be inspired to vote for Harris. I can't think of a single guy that's like, oh yeah, I was I was on the fence about either her or Trump, but now that Obama has shamed me for not supporting someone, and and you know, let me also say this: black voters. I know that like the, the stupid media likes to pretend that we are, but we're not a monolith. Um, there are some black conservatives, right, that are on here, um, but even like among the you know more moderate left wing ones, whatever. The fact that Harris went to a black school does not, like, wh what person who is afraid that they're not going to be able to pay their rent next, next month cares about that, you know? Um, and it's also really insulting to us as voters because it's like, oh, yeah, this person is black, so I must support. It's like, no, I didn't, I didn't support Alan Keyes or Herman Cain or, you know, Carson or uh, Scott when he ran, you know, this year as well. It's like, I don't. I'm not excited for candidates just because they have the same ethnicity as me. You know, just, just more nonsense. But yeah, this is um, really bringing me back to my video I made on Obama being the worst ex-president in American history. And I said the you know the reason for stating that is he's a he's someone who has never been through that period of disgrace that either Clinton or Bush have been in, right? Where, you know, during the Me Too stuff, Clinton was just like held in a secret bunker somewhere. And then Bush was extremely unpopular after he left office. Democrats have been clamoring for him to just be more involved. And his his whole role in a retirement that has now stretched to being seven years has been building a monument to himself with his presidential library. Getting involved with making a bunch of movies and whatever. And endorsing and campaigning for people that run for office every two to four years. Um, it, it's a really sad state of affairs. Because it's like you look at someone who, and this is a common theme with politicians. When they're out of office, it's generally assumed that they can be more upfront with whatever their position is. You know, just they're more open to like not towing the party line. Obama should have been the first one to pull Harris into a room and say, listen, if you want to follow me into the White House, follow Biden into the White House, you need to get this one-fourth of bl young black male voters to be satisfied with you. You need to directly go before them, have a town hall, have some panel, 
and ask them, what are your concerns? What are the things that are bothering you? Why, why are you shifting away from the party that your dad and grandpa supported? What is causing that? A lot of them would answer about income inequality. A lot of them would answer, you know, some would answer about the border. Some would answer about Gaza. But the point is that she, at least if she, tr you know, directly addressed it, it would look like she actually wants their support instead of thinking she can just, you know, ignore them and still win anyway, which is the current strategy being taken. But he's he's just such a just extremely condescending figure at this point. And I, I really think that if Harris loses this election, his comments alone are going to be like the, the main reason, like the you know biggest singular factor. But they're not helping her. And it's just sad to watch someone who, you know, I remember, the, you know, Obama's 2008 campaign. People were excited for him as president. He entered office with, I think, a 70 percent approval rating. And, you know, there was a lot of hope in terms of just doing things about the banks and getting us out of wars. And so much of it turned out to be for nothing. Uh, and we got the completely, you know, we got Bush's third term effectively in many ways. So his his comments are stupid. He's continuing to prove why he should he'd be better off just sitting in Martha's Vineyard. Um, he adds nothing to politics anymore, which is really sad because, like I said, when someone leaves office, that's when they're supposed to be more able to just say whatever they want. I'm done running for things. But he, he just shows how out of touch he is. Um, and it's. It's that same deafness and inability to directly speak to the voters in ways that are not condescending that may end up costing the Democrats the White House in four short weeks.